All right, we back. Mercy Sports Talk. We in the building. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Won't miss another video with Matt Patricia uh, gives a reasoning for Matthew Stafford not playing um, and last night preseason game. I will be going live, God willing, uh, today about last night and some lying things, man. So make sure you hit that bell icon button along with the subscribe button if you haven't. Best thing you can do for your boy. Donation you can make and share the video. And um, But basically said that they got so much good work and so many reps versus the Houston, Texas that you know, he didn't need to work, and other guys need to work, like Josh Johnson and David Fells um, out there. So, you know, leave it at that. Um, I believe they could percat, and if I can find the tweet, I'll link that in the description as well, along with this article. It'll be under source links. Um, he said that he had some type of uh, thing on his shoulder throwing last night. Maybe I misread it, but um, at the end of the day, it is what it is, you know. Um, you think of a new offense that, uh, you know, they need to get acquainted kind of with the routes and the in and outs and, you know, how you run this route, do you round it off or how you come in and out of this break. But, you know, if they go, they doing joint practices, I guess so. But the thing that rubbed me wrong about the joint practices is that you don't really get a live pass rush. You know what I'm saying? And you don't get those live pass rush in the NFL like when Joe Theismann got his leg broke off, I think it was by LT, or, or when they was beating the hell out of Joe Montana or, excuse me, or John Elway. What I mean by that, you don't really get that 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 violence off the edge or through the middle, you know, John Randall and uh, Reggie White. You don't really get that violence no more because now you got a strike zone. You know, from here, you know, really to, you know, maybe of just above the knee. So, you know, you got to really think before you go out there and, and get ferocious with the quarterback. So, so it's always that, that hesitance from the pass rushers now, but... It, it, it's still it's still way more liver and it's more strenuous and it's more more violent than in, in, in the practice. So you know the seven on sevens and you know you got the little rushers that's rushing the quarterback, knowing that he got that red jersey on. That can't really simulate it, but if they call it low management or they call and they want to get guys more work, um, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? I just one thing I like last night not to give away the stream is they look more professional last night. But with the Stafford situation, I'm worried. Because if it's true he had some type of sling or, or some type of support thing on his shoulder last night, and if I find that tweet, I put in the source, source link. They put so much on Matthew Stafford, man. Um, and this year, it don't look like it's going to be no different. Um, but, you know, I, I'm really not concerned about it. He's been in the league 11 years. Um, he played with all types of injuries since year, day one or year one. It doesn't really worry me, you know. It don't. Um I'm, a, you know, because Marvin Jones not out there, Danny Amendola not out there, him and Hawkinson been forming rapport in camp, really good rapport. And he looked really nimble and quick last night um, on that catch, 22 yard catch. Um, obviously, him and Brandon Pine have formed a rapport before. He played a well, all five offensive linemen before already, and some backups. Crosby, it depend on who used the backup, Dale or Wiggins. He played with all of them guys before. He handed the ball off to. To T.J. Hawkinson, I'm not T.J. Hawkins, but uh, Kerryon Johnson, um, he got used to just handing, handing the ball off. And C.J. Anderson, he handed off to Zinner, who had some good runs last night. He got used to Tyler Johnson's speed. But pretty much, it's you know, it is what it is. They getting good reps in practice. They getting good reps in practice. I, I can't really knock it, you know, and I'm not going to knock it, man. So I'm not, I'm not really concerned, uh, overly concerned. But it concerns me a guy coming off. Uh, fractured bones in his back, broken bones, whatever you want to call it. A guy that just missed a week of throwing in practice. Um, and then he has some type of support thing possibly on his shoulder warming up last night. A guy that ain't played in the first two preseason games. That's a formula to say he's injured or some injury. So this is where we kind of go back from last year at and say this is why you shut down Matthew Stafford. You shut down Matthew Stafford so he gives his body a full time to heal. It wasn't necessarily tanking. Because your quarterback was playing with broken bones in his body. Now, if he wanted to go out there and play because he wanted to play for some incentives in his contract, so be it. But you didn't need the guy down the last month of the season. He could have used that time to heal. But nobody could predict mentally what was going to happen happen to him this offseason with his wife. But last offseason, they had twins, and that can be daunting no matter if you got the money for it made or not. You know, So mentally, the last two offseasons, he's been, you know, he been climbing Mount Everest. You know, he really has. So, you know, it's, it's like, man, you know, but he immensely strong quarterback. 
But um, second half of the video is they put too much um, responsibility on him. I was listening to Pat Caputo for a minute. This is the, one of the rare times I listen to regular radio. I'm more of a serious XM satellite guy. And I was listening to Pat Caputo this morning, and he says that he said from day one, he, you know, well, not from day one, from, you know, this offseason that he always felt the last couple of years, excuse me, that they put too much responsibility on Matthew Stafford to go out there. And it, with him, they got a chance to be, you know, whatever they can be. Without him, they don't have a chance to be nothing. And I agree with him, man. Everything begins and ends with Matthew Stafford. You can lose a linebacker. You can lose an offensive lineman. You can lose a safety. But if you lose Matthew Stafford, the season has failed. And they haven't put no pressure on him for bringing the backup quarterback to really push the greatness out of him. The last time Matthew Stafford probably had to fight for a quarterback spot was probably in Pop Warner. <laughs> you know, in high school, he was that guy. In college, he was that guy. In the NFL, he, he don't, I mean, you know, it's no fire. It's no fire behind him. But also, they need him to go out there and be Mr. Everything. They need him to run for his life. They need him to, to get the ball out of his hands so, you know, so the offensive lineman, you know, uh, don't have to black lawn. They didn't want him to go out there slinging around 50 times in, in previous years um, um, without a running game. All right, they, they want him to do so much and they put so much onus on him. How long do they think he gonna be able to be his his body gonna be able to be intact? And mentally, how long he gonna be able to be intact with everything being put on him? Everything. It's a heavy load to have, and not too many quarterbacks have had that load and had and, and succeeded. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is one of the very few. You know, people say Dan Marino. I think his second year made a Super Bowl. John Elway was carrying some of those Bronco teams. And he lost three Super Bowls, and it's on his, it's on the blood on his hand because the quarterback is responsible wins and losses. That's just how I look at it. They're not looking at, oh, his defense was bad, or, or he didn't have this type of running game, and you know they're not looking at that. When they look at your career, when you go, you go in and say, damn, he didn't win. Stafford didn't win no, no playoff game. He had all these stats, these stats, but he didn't win. And, and you got to ask why, and, and it's the organization. It's the structure around him. He came in on all 16 team, and they have yet to legitimately bounce back and put a formidable team around him. He had a good, de great defense one year, but the offensive coordinator was was whack, and Joe Lombardi. So, you know, obviously he got the rise above this. You know what I'm saying? He got the rise above this, man. And um, not too many guys would have survived this, but they ain't putting too much on him. And hopefully, Daryl Bevel was a guy that takes some pressure off of him. And I believe Daryl Bevel will. Um, I think they'll run the ball more. I think you see more whams, traps, power plays, stretch plays. Zone. You're going to see a variety of things that they're going to do um, with the offense. Hope they keep it short and simple. And then really, you don't want Stafford throwing the ball more than 20, 25 times a game on average. But um, I think it is some cause for concern, you know, physically for him. Obviously, it's always cause for concern when you got a quarterback going into the 11th year. you got a quarterback who had fractures in his bone. you got a quarterback that didn't throw for a week magically. And all of a sudden, he has a, a, a something to support his shoulder throwing the ball. It's always cause for concern, man. But um, if if he ain't, like, I've been saying this all offseason. I know I didn't get Brock Osweiler. I didn't draft somebody young and develop like real great in the middle of the draft. Or Drew Locke, take a chance, start building behind, behind, behind Matthew Stafford. But they didn't. And if Stafford is, is seriously injured, and I think that's a real possibility with the offensive line we got, if he really injured, he get injured, and I, I said it before, and I said it again, Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia deserve to be fired, or whoever responsible for that, they deserve to be fired for not putting nobody in there, that, uh, having a, a good plan, a good backup behind Matthew Stafford. Castle, uh, at least a Sean Hill or Drew Stanton type, and they didn't do it. Now, if it's financial, they didn't want to invest into a straight quarterback, I don't know. You no, know, it may not necessarily be on Bob Quinn. Bob Quinn might go like, all right, this ain't, you know, we need to put, you know, prepare. And maybe the organization's like, well, no, financially, or we don't want to put the pressure on Stafford. So we'll see, man. But uh, if he don't take no snaps in the third preseason game, then I think it's going to raise some concerns. But we'll go live, and I'll chop it up a little bit more about it. But um, let me know what you guys think. Motor City Sports Talk. Um, we in the building. Me and Miles sit out here in Livonia waiting on our food to get done. Well, yeah, it is our food because he can eat it. Um Appreciate it. Share the videos. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Engage me on Twitter, man. Add me questions, man. I want to get active on Twitter on that account. So hit me up. All my information is in the description. Appreciate the love, support. I'm going to find a way to stream my live streams on Facebook too, man. 
Uh, just give me a minute on that. One time for one time we go.